morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone's Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Sunday the 7th of September 2025. Heaps to get through in today's weather forecast update, a strong storm forecast offshore from New South Wales mid next week. Severe thunderstorms piping up tomorrow across central and eastern Australia, rainfall expected in far north Queensland and still winter storms blowing through the southwest and the southeast of the nation. Heaps to talk about in today's weather forecast update, so if you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning with the elephant in the Great Australian Bight and when I say elephant this is a true titan of a winter storm here. It's made a big journey in the last 24 hours from going into the southeastern, the southwestern corner of Western Australia around Albany and Esperance, and it's now well south of Australia in the Great Australian Bight, but bringing some showers and storms to parts of New South Wales, South Australia, Victoria, and parts of Tasmania throughout the course of today. And we are expecting this to be a severe weather event through parts of Tasmania and into the Victorian Alps and the New South Wales Snowy Mountains. I'll talk about this system in just a few moments, but briefly, we do have a weak cold front moving through into the southwest corner of Western in Australia. It's not expected to be a significant weather event at all. Just a few more drops of rainfall expected throughout the remainder of today. Into this afternoon, you can see this system here really not packing a punch at all. A few showers lingering in the Perth metro area. They're slowly going to pick up a little bit as we get into the afternoon hours before this frontal system moves through at about 11 or 12 o'clock into the Perth metro area with, again, a few light showers expected here and there, but nothing really uh, significant expected from this weather system here. And behind it, again, a few more showers. They'll ease off later tonight into early tomorrow morning. But this system here, uh, well out into the Great Australian Bight, the one that's caused all sorts of severe weather through southwestern Western Australia is now going on to cause severe weather through parts of southeastern Australia. This morning we're waking up to thunderstorms through parts of New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia, in particular around the border or where all these states kind of converge here south of Broken Hill around Mildura and into the western part of Victoria. Now these thunderstorms are going to become a little bit more uh, kind of isolated throughout the remainder of this morning and then they'll fire up again into the northern uh, parts of Victoria and into the central parts of New South Wales throughout this evening. We're expecting rainfall to pipe up across the north coast of Tasmania in the next couple of hours as well, which could get heavy at times and accompanied with strong winds across the west coast of Tasmania. This cold front will pack a punch through uh, parts of Tassie. Thunderstorms are expected to be an ongoing occurrence throughout the tonight as well through parts of Victoria, and we are expecting some of these thunderstorms to go severe later on with some strong wind gusts and isolated heavy dumps of rainfall throughout the northern and the northeastern corner of Victoria, in particularly north of Bendigo around Shepherd and Mansfield, uh, Albury, these sort of areas here that are on the foothills and the fringe communities around the uh, Victorian high country. A few thunderstorms also expected over the border and towards New South Wales, but nothing in the way of severe thunderstorm activity is expected there. This low pressure system is heading rapidly towards the southeast, which means we're not expecting major blows in terms of severe weather throughout southeastern Australia. And this cold front, whilst it is strengthening, it's heading far away from Australia and it's expected to be well south of the Australian mainland as we get out towards tomorrow morning. And it's not expected to be a severe weather threat from that point onward then uh, the weather forecast gets a whole lot more confusing from tomorrow. I'm going to start by talking about the severe thunderstorm chances through interior parts of Australia through tomorrow. But we've also got this cutoff low pressure system that's expected to cause all sorts of severe weather through parts of the southeast and the Illawarra coast of New South Wales uh, around the middle parts of next week, Wednesday and Thursday. This one's actually expected to get uh, quite strong. So I'll talk about this in just a few moments. But for parts of interior Australia, in particularly through uh, central Australia, through uh, the Northern Territory parts of northeast and south Australia, and into the channel country of uh, Queensland, we are expecting some pretty significant severe thunderstorms for this time of the year to fire up tomorrow. We're going to see a trough develop through this part of uh, Australia uh, tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening, and under the, some very favourable conditions for thunderstorm development, I mean, have a look at the convective available potential energy forecast for tomorrow. We're looking at values well above 1,000, pushing close to 15 or 1,600 joules per kilogram of air available for, to these thunderstorms to use. That's incredible values for the month of September in this part of Australia, that's for sure. Uh, high humidity, high temperatures. We are expecting a cracker outbreak of thunderstorms for early September through parts of the Northern Territory into the northeast corner of South Australia and the southwestern parts of Queensland. The places most likely to receive severe thunderstorms tomorrow are going to be around Birdsville, Bedore, Windora, Thargaminda, Moomba into the northeast of South Australia in Aminka. Uh, and these thunderstorms will also make it down towards Lake Eyre and potentially as far towards the west as William Creek as well. Alice Springs is a good chance of thunderstorms as mentioned, but especially towards the southeast of Alice Springs in this very remote part of the Northern Territory. Great chance of severe thunderstorms as well. And even later on into the afternoon and into the evening into the north uh, western corner of New South Wales through Wilcannia, Broken Hill, White Cliffs to Babura, Wanaring, even out towards Cobar and Burke later on in the night, we are expecting the chance of thunderstorms, some of which could potentially be severe. Severe thunderstorms into the interior parts of Australia going well on into Monday night into early Tuesday morning. And you can see they actually get more intense through Monday night into Tuesday morning. And we'll be waking up to a pretty significant line of thunderstorms through Tuesday 
morning as well, which with the early morning sun will also gather some more intensity as this low pressure system really begins to build. In short, widespread and some pretty prominent severe thunderstorms are expected through Monday night into Tuesday morning. Uh, prolonged outbreak expected around the uh, kind of zone where Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia and the Northern Territory all meet in this uh, little pocket of South Australia here. Uh, some very prolonged severe thunderstorm chances are going to be ongoing there and they'll continue right through Tuesday as well and towards Tuesday night. Tuesday night also expecting to be a great thunderstorm chance uh, occurrence into the western half of Victoria, uh, Victoria, New South Wales rather, especially around Broken Hill, Wanaring, uh, White Cliffs and Wilcannia, again, more severe thunderstorms expected on Tuesday night under some very favourable conditions there. Warm temperatures and humidity just expected to be ongoing and again, combined with some very high convective available potential energy values again Tuesday night with some very healthy values also out towards Queensland here. Have a look at these here, pushing close to 2,000 here on the convective available potential energy scale. These are some extraordinary numbers for early September and even in this part of Australia as well, when we're talking about thunderstorms and severe thunderstorm chances in September, uh, we're more talking about coastal New South Wales in coastal Queensland, not interior Australia, that's for sure at this time of the year. So definitely it's going to be quite a significant thunderstorm outbreak. And considering we had some pretty good thunderstorms last night throughout the eastern half of South Australia uh, or, or just towards the eastern end of the Flinders Ranges, I do reckon tomorrow and th uh, Tuesday are going to be some cracker days for some gnarly severe thunderstorms into interior parts of Australia. Pushing the forecast models forward, you can see more rainfall expected through much of interior New South Wales. That's going to continue through Tuesday and Wednesday. And then you can see a strong low pressure system really beginning to get itself going with plenty of moisture and plenty of available energy here for this low pressure system to really go bang and uh, make the most of a very favorable environment through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. This low pressure system will bring widespread rainfall, uh, moderate of sorts. The rainfall isn't expected to be anything too heavy or too crazy, but widespread falls Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Could be between 20 to 50 millimeters through the southern half of New South Wales, right out towards Mildura and Victoria. And then this low pressure system gets itself offshore through Wednesday afternoon and evening. And then this is where it goes bang. It's expected to undergo a phase of some pretty quick intensification. And an East Coast low is likely to form out of this system here very quickly through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Major forecast models are calling for a small but very powerful low pressure system. You can see here sustained winds of this low pressure system expected to approach 90 or even 100 kilometers an hour through Thursday morning with wind gusts much stronger than that, pushing close to 130 even up towards 140 kilometers an hour in places here. We are expecting the worst of this storm to quickly move offshore though, and that's the good thing about this forecast is that this system does not hang around close to New South Wales at all for any prolonged period of time. It's expected to get itself right out into the Tasman Sea very quickly. So whilst a brief to extended period of gusty showers and winds is expected for the New South Wales southeast, right up to about, uh, well, probably about Newcastle or Nelson Bay at this point in time with a uh, chance of damaging wind gusts through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning, it's not going to be a prolonged destructive wind or destructive thunderstorm outbreak across parts of New South Wales because the system will get itself well out into the Tasman Sea very quickly and you can see by Thursday evening it's already closer to New Zealand than it is to Australia and we're expecting a pretty good walloping for New Zealand from this weather system as well you can see going into the North Island on Friday as a very large and quite a powerful weather system. This is definitely one of the strongest storms that I've seen in this part of New South Wales this year so far and the fact that it just intensifies so quickly I mean you can see here emerging early Wednesday afternoon offshore from Sydney uh, with maximum wind gusts around 65 kilometers an hour and then by early Thursday morning wind gusts have doubled uh, pushing close to 135 kilometers an hour here in this weather system so it really is uh, quite amazing how quickly this weather system is expected to intensify but again for the New South Wales coastline maximum sustained winds around that 60 to 70 kilometer an hour mark probably around point perpendicular or around Jervis Bay and peak wind gusts around 80 to 90 kilometers an hour there will be some strong wind gusts into the snow mountains in the Victorian high country as will there be for some parts of the Hunter region and into the uh, Barrington Tops and the Northern Tablelands and even into the uh, uh, Queensland Granite Belt and Coalfields we could be seeing some strong wind gusts as well with isolated damaging wind gusts expected through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. However we're not expecting severe weather warnings to be raised as a result solely from this low pressure system. It is a strong one, it's definitely a significant one that's for sure but again because it's not going to be uh, within close proximity to the New South Wales coastline and it really isn't expected to hang around either, we're not expecting a prolonged period of significant severe weather. Rainfall is looking very healthy for a wide swathe of New South Wales, though we're expecting widespread falls in the thunderstorm zones to be between 10 to 50 millimetres under the right thunderstorms. It's going to be the, on the higher side of that prediction there. Uh, again, we are talking about thunderstorms, so for locations kind of tracing the uh, line that the curse is following here, uh, kind of between the New South Wales Victoria border around uh, Mildura, right up to about Moree, just in this line here, anywhere towards the northwest of that, rainfall is going to be a lot more unpredictable, a lot more hit and miss, and falls could be much closer to zero or they could be much closer 
closer to 50 millimeters. However, once you get further towards the southeast of that line, down around the more uh, wetter communities around Griffith, Orange, Dubbo, Parks, Young, those sort of areas, and then across in towards the northeastern parts of, the, of Victoria, around Albury and Wagga Wagga, uh, and then into the Australian Capital Territory and into the southeast coast of New South Wales, rainfall totals will steadily begin to increase. Widespread falls between 20 to 40 millimeters expected, and then falls up to around 60 or 70 millimeters possible on the Illawarra coastline and the southeast coastline between Naruma up to about Wollongong from showers coming through from the low pressure system forecast to develop offshore from New South Wales on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Also, I do know that Wagga Wagga is in New South Wales. I can smell the comments already <laughs> developing, so <laughs> you can take back whatever you're typing right now. But yeah, in terms of some significant severe weather, it really is going to all be happening in the next couple of days through parts of Central Australia and then into the nation southeast. It really is a pretty significant forecast for early September, and it shows you just how quickly we're being thrown into this change of season type stuff, uh, where we're talking about severe thunderstorms or winter weather one week, and then now widespread severe thunderstorms through parts of the Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia, New South Wales, and even a strong East Coast low possible very briefly offshore from uh, Southeastern Australia. So definitely is a pretty significant forecast forecast, that's for sure. Just before I tap in towards far north Queensland, I would like to briefly touch on the temperature forecast through parts of central Australia. We're expecting temperatures to approach 37 degrees now in parts of the Northern Territory today, and that's going to increase to 38 degrees tomorrow uh, through parts of the Northern Territory. We're expecting a very warm day into the channel country of Queensland as well, 35, 36, even 37 in pockets tomorrow. Tuesday is going to be just as warm through parts of the Northern Territory and even parts of Queensland, but temperatures in the wake of this low pressure system moving through will be a little bit milder in those thunderstorms zones and then Wednesday temperatures are expected to be substantially colder so definitely some heat wave conditions coming through throughout the course of this week temperatures much further above average through parts of the Northern Territory a wide swathe of Queensland and even in towards South Australia and New South Wales as well temperatures already very quickly beginning to climb 26 at Mount Isa now 24 at Jervis here outside of Alice Springs uh, in stark contrast the bitterly cold temperatures that we're seeing over in Western Australia right now just have a look at the swing in the temperatures uh, from one side of the nation here at four degrees at um, uh, Katanning here in Western Australia, three degrees at Newdigate, and we're looking at temperatures over in the eastern half of Australia at the same latitude, about five times warmer than that, between 16 to 20 degrees this morning. So it definitely is a warm one this morning. It definitely is expected to be a warm one in the next couple of days. Plenty of energy out there for these thunderstorms and plenty of energy out there for some severe weather. So buckle up because it's an interesting forecast, that's for sure. And just briefly up in towards far north Queensland, I would have expected more rainfall to be moving into the Cassidy Coast this morning. I did say that for the last couple of days that we've been talking about a shower risk throughout the course of this weekend. And whilst the showers have most certainly developed, you can see rainfall rates are beginning to pick up across parts of the Cassidy Coast, especially for those north of Innisfail. I mean, if you have a look at the rainfall radar over the last 24 hours, it hasn't been anything special at all. And in fact, rainfall accumulations have been far less than I expected. Uh, the southeasterly flow has been strong. I mean, the winds have most certainly been there. You can see sustained winds between 40 to 50 kilometers an hour and overnight there have been some pretty steady and at times heavy rainfall accumulations but it really hasn't been anything too flash so so far the southeasterly flow has been quite disappointing forecast models still calling for it to intensify a little bit in the next couple of hours and then slowly ease off later this afternoon and this evening with showers still persisting through monday and into early tuesday morning but not expecting anything too crazy to occur up and towards far north queensland don't get me wrong we never were expecting more than about 50 millimeters through the casper coast but rainfall hasn't really materialized yet so if you have had some significant accumulations, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, and yeah, this forecast has been a, a bit of a, a bit of a hard one, definitely a little bit of a chop and change one up in towards far north Queensland. But one thing's looking a little bit clearer is that after the 13th, we're going to be talking about more rainfall up in towards far north Queensland, starting with some low pressure that's going to develop into the Coral Sea. And then you can see through the 13th, 14th and 15th, that is uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then out towards Monday, you can see showers becoming quite widespread through the Casper Coast and even into the Daintree Rainforest. And as we zoom out through much of the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula as well. So rainfall looking to be a little bit more widespread and probably a little bit heavier as well through the 13th and the 14th of September out towards next weekend. That should carry over and towards the third week of September as well. You can see more rainfall expected on the forecast models out there. But definitely some pretty decent rainfall accumulations now on the forecast. You can see here uh, three-day rainfall accumulations from the East Malaya forecast model. We're pushing close towards 60, 70, even 80 millimeters in a few spots here around the Casper Coast. Uh, and as you know, 
with the Cassari Coast, where with all the mountain valleys there, rainfall accumulations can very quickly run far above what the forecast models predict, even in a worst case scenario. So we could be talking about some much heavier rainfall accumulations up there. Just while we do have it, the convective forecast models aren't really calling for much in the way of rainfall throughout the remainder of today. So I imagine the worst of the rainfall has already occurred for uh, the Cassari Coast and probably looking at a further five to 15 millimeters uh, from showers coming through around the Cassari Coast as well. So the first round of this rainfall is really fused out for northern Queensland. I don't imagine that's going to be the case though in the next rainfall event because if you do have a look at what we are expecting later on into the week and out towards next weekend, we're going to have a bit more low pressure system activity, a little bit more thunderstorm activity building throughout the uh, Cassari Coast and just the Cape York Peninsula in general and that will likely lead to uh, much heavier rainfall accumulations than what uh, we have seen this weekend uh, by itself. So disappointing rain this weekend should be a little bit better the next weekend for the northern parts of Queensland. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you found it enjoyable and informative. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Heaps to get through in the next couple of days, that's for sure. East Coast low, thunderstorms, all that jazz coming through in the next couple of days. So stick around for that. Uh, follow the Facebook page as well. And of course, a special shout out goes out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not only show without them, forever grateful for all of them that are on the screen right now. Uh, if you do want to get any of that mentioned at this part of the forecast update, plus help out the Cyclones Oz channel in a very significant way click the join button down below it's a fantastic way to support uh, and all of the money goes straight back into the channel so thank you so much for that and thank you so much for watching the video and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye